And being that you chose Jordan, um, what is LeBron's biggest flaw? Um, I think that he's a, he's a whiner, you know. I think that, you know, you see him going into the lane and he gets a little contact and he's he's going like this. He's looking at the ref and you can see he's he's jawing at his teammates and stuff. Michael Jordan was all business. So, you know, he led by example. LeBron, sometimes he gets a little bit caught up in the moment, gets a little bit caught up in the Instagram, you know, the social media. That's one thing that they didn't have to worry about back then. So, you know, I think just, just the flaw of that is, uh, is kind of what brings him down a little bit as well. Okay. What would it take for your answer to change from Michael to LeBron in this question? Um, man, we need to go back in time a little bit because, you know, he's three for eight in the finals. Um, he's got three MVPs. You know, Michael's six for six. Michael also took a couple years off. Who knows, would he have won even more, you know, if he, if he didn't play baseball for a couple of years and walk away from the game. So, um, but LeBron definitely needs to win definitely at least two more championships and be the MVP in that. But I think he also just needs to um, just step, step up and kind of clean up his, like get rid of the whining a little bit. So when, when he moves into his later stages of the career, just be more of a facilitator and, and allow someone else to take the shot every once in a while. Don't just hog the ball all the time and, and do it all yourself. You know, you're, you're about to be 35 years old here in a couple of years. So you have, to, you have to step back a little bit, be a little bit more of a facilitator. He's a great passer. And you know, you're a small forward, you don't have to be holding the ball every time. So, yeah, he definitely needs to win at least two more championships. It doesn't really matter to me where, where he wins them because, we, you know, we, we've we seen it'd – be, it'd be nicer to see for, for his argument that he has a little bit of a tougher path in the playoffs, mm -hmm. not just waltz through the East. Maybe if he goes out West right now, he has a tougher path, but we'll see. But right now, yeah, he's got a little bit of work to do. Okay, and this is the final question I asked you today on my show. Um, but there's any other – great basketball athlete who do you think could be compared to michael and jordan uh you always hear kobe bryant's name tossed in the mix i think that he's got that that killer instinct as well so you know he was out there with with shaq and i think that's one thing that's interesting about michael and lebron is you know michael had scotty pippen lebron has been you know he was down in miami with d wade and chris bosh and then comes back up to cleveland and wins it with Kyrie and kevin love so all of these guys have had help, you know, that, that shows that you do need to be a team player to be considered in this greatness conversation. But, you know, Kobe had Shaq later on down the road. He had um, he even had Karl Malone at the end of his career. So Kobe had help. And then later on, you know, he had D Fish. He had Ron Artest, Metal World Peace, you know, so he, he had help. He had Pau Gasol. So I think you need to be a little bit of a team player too. We need to give a shout out to both those guys for sharing the rock a little bit, but yeah, you, Kobe's got that, you know, Black Mamba mentality, and and I think he, he's really the only one you can really throw in there. Kevin Durant is really the, the closest fourth just with what he's doing right now, but personally, softest move in sports ever for Kevin Durant moving to the Warriors after after being up 3-1 -0, in, in Oklahoma City a few years back. Are you kidding me, KD? I hope you see this. Um, <laughs> that's that's unbelievable. But yeah, it's Kobe 3, Kevin Durant 4. Okay. Well, that's all for you guys today on Day Days TV. Now you have Jason's opinion between Jordan and LeBron. Uh, I hope to see you guys next time on my show. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to another show of Day Days TV. And today we have Paul Hosdovic, uh, an assistant academic coordinator at Syracuse University. And um, he'll be discussing the hot topic that we just had last week uh, between the Jordan and LeBron that we discussed with Jason. And um, my first question to you would be, out of those two, who would you choose? Yeah, so it's it's definitely a great debate. Obviously, I was I was able to watch your interview last week with Jason. Um, watched every second of it. I think I watched it three or four times because I knew I was going to be on your show. I knew you were going to ask, so I'm a little, I tried to prepare as best as possible today. But um, yeah, it's it's like like Jason said last week. You know, it's apples and oranges. It's all. Um, what your taste buds prefer. Do you prefer a um, shooting guard who potentially even brings the ball up the court or do you prefer someone who could legitimately and has legitimately played every single position on the court in what is potentially the most athletic era in sports? And so that's sort of where you can get my answer from. LeBron James, no doubt. I was, um, I've watched him as a youngster at St. Vincent, St. Mary's and everything that he's been able to accomplish 
um, every single record that he either has now or will continue to build on and get someday. Um, it's, it's just really been a pleasure to watch every aspect of his game develop. So LeBron James. Okay, and um, why is it that you choose LeBron? What about him makes you lean more towards his side? Uh, yeah, so the the biggest thing I know a lot of people a lot of people are going to talk about championships and it's that's a deserving argument. Obviously, you want to have someone with that that clutch factor and the ability to put rings on their fingers. But when you look at the the finals appearances eight years in a row, um, and in terms of not only does he score the ball, but he makes his teammates way better. And in some of these most recent cases, his teammates really weren't anything without him. Um, and his ability to rebound, pass the ball, shoot the ball, block the ball, steal the ball, steal the ball according to um, what a small forward, power forward would be stealing. Obviously, with the Michael argument, he was um, he stole the ball almost two, three times a night because he was guarding the point guard, bringing the ball up the court. So you have to get the steal. So, um, but like I said already once today, um, apples and oranges. You know, it all depends on what you're looking for. And what I'm looking for is for someone who could control the entire game. And I believe that LeBron would be the better pick for that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is there any specific stat or anything that stands out when you look at the comparison between LeBron and Jordan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when, when, I, when you look at the comparison, the, the big stat, I think, is making it to the championship and being, um, being a proven winner every single year you step on the court. Um, as, as many times as, as Jason mentioned, the six for six in finals, um, he knows how to get into that moment and he knows how to win in that moment for, for Michael Jordan, but he also lost in the first round three times. He lost in the second round four times. So when it comes down to that, once he gets to the moment, yes, but getting to that moment, um, let's not forget about the, the pitfalls that he had. Um, and so the, the, the concept of like anything specifically not just the the championships but being able to get to the championship series every single time that level of consistency is something this game has never seen before okay with the team lebron had this season do you feel he could carry that team back in jordan era yeah so the it's is the era question is definitely something that that is um is valid you know it's a lot tougher to go into the paint um, and, and not just LeBron's case, you, you take Steph Curry doing all that shimmying and everything, making three-pointers, guys would just knock them out. They would literally go up to them and hit them with the right hook. So a lot of that stuff really wouldn't fly. Um, and, and, and also with the era too, there was a lot more communication with the referees. They were a lot more willing to, to accept some conversations as opposed to nowadays where you, you have to go and cry to them to get something to happen. But um, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But I would say, just based off of the eras, the, if LeBron can do it in this era, he can do it in any era. Because the guys are bigger, they're faster, and they're stronger. They're all taller, they're all faster, and they can all jump higher than what they used to. Obviously, there was exceptions to some things. Um, and, and definitely, I think, for, for, for the most part, there was much better coaching throughout the league. There was much more systematic things in place um, for plays and positional things that, that really made them more of a team. I feel as though now it might be a little bit more individual, but I think if he can do it now, he should be able to do it later um, in previous years. The question is though, how long is he going to be able to continue that? Okay. Um, with this Bulls team that Jordan had, take Jordan out of the picture, stick LeBron in the plug, being that he's an all-around player, how do you think? How do you think that team? Do you think that team will still have the same accomplishment they had with LeBron on the team than with Jordan? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. You know, when you, when you think about that, um, it's it's really important to understand that they play two different positions, and so if you took out a, a point guard, shooting guard, and replaced him with one of the world's best forwards, um, you got to look at some things like how would Scottie Pippen's role change. Um, because Scottie Pippen essentially would be what LeBron would be doing for the most part. In, in some cases, LeBron has a little bit more flexibility there. But it, when it really comes down to it, I think um, LeBron would have to change certain things that he does about himself. You know, Michael was the scorer on the team. Michael was supposed to take the ball and put it in the basket. He wasn't necessarily there to rebound. Pass the basketball. Did he pass the basketball? Did he not? Absolutely. He did everything that he could. But I think another um, twist to that would be
like that. So I absolutely think that if he if he could do what he's doing now, he could absolutely adjust and adapt his game to make them just as successful, if not more successful. They would never lose in the first round if you put my, um, LeBron James on that team. There's no doubt. I don't care who they're playing. Larry Bird at one point in time was supposed to be a Hall of Famer, throwing shots at Jason's last week interview was at one point in time was regarded as one of the best shooters of that era. He shot 34% from the eye in the arc. That wouldn't even make the Atlanta Hawks right now. So when you think about that, um, and he also averaged, what, 10 rebounds a game, he didn't jump. You know, he had knee problems. He, he got two inches off the court, but he was still very successful. So um, anything's possible, but I think he would be successful no matter where he was at. Okay. Now, um, earlier you said that the game was more physical, and you know there was a lot more fighting stuff going on, a lot of more aggression being shown on the court. Um, do you feel LeBron could hold his own back in that era? Like, do you think he'll be capable of doing exactly what he 